If you're watching this video, you're probably either considering studying medicine yourself or you're curious about my experiences so far. So I'm going to sit here, sip on my beer and chat a little bit about some of my experiences so far. So for some context, my name is Gary McGowan. I'm a medical student at University College Cork, UCC, here in Ireland. And I'm just heading into my final year of medicine now. And I've made a couple of videos in the past where I've discussed my experience in first year and second year. And now I'm discussing my experiences heading into final year. And I think for the most part, my perspective on studying medicine as a whole has been very similar throughout. Thankfully, I didn't come into medicine with rose-tinted glasses because I studied physiotherapy previously. Um, I had also known a number of medical students and doctors myself. So I wasn't coming in thinking it was going to be something that it wasn't, okay? I think that's something that's very important because a lot of people probably come into medicine thinking that once they're in, they're going to be learning all these amazing things about how to cure diseases and you graduate at the end of your four or five or six years, depending on the course, and you're just ready to solve all of uh, the world's medical problems. And if only it was so simple. I think that's probably the, one of the most uh, potent lessons that a lot of people learn early on is that the field of medicine is so incredibly vast in both width and depth that there is absolutely no way that you can learn it all. There's no way you can solve every problem. There's no way you can learn in four years even to be a, a competent doctor to solve very common issues. It's, even, even that much is a, a lot to ask for. Um, medicine is very difficult. It's difficult in practice and difficult in terms of the process of studying medicine. For me myself, I came in, as I said, with a background in physiotherapy, so I had an idea of what might be involved. I had some experience in the clinical environment, and I think that's something that stood to me. That is something that a lot of people do struggle with initially, because people come into medicine with uh, you know, an academic background, they've got academic achievements, they've always done well in their exams, they might be very interested in the, the sciences, in biology or physics or chemistry, or whatever their strengths happen to be. And then suddenly you realize that the goal of medicine is to be able to take those sciences, take the important parts of them, and then apply them to real life human situations. And that involves additional communication skills. It involves things like breaking bad news, you know, being able to understand how to communicate with different populations and all of these so-called soft skills that are incredibly important in, in something as simple as history taking, you know, asking the person the right questions and asking them in an appropriate manner so that you get the information that you need. Performing a physical exam comfortably and appropriately. All of these things that are not, not, they cannot be taught in a textbook. You can learn certain things in a textbook that apply obviously to your history taking and your physical exam, but there's a lot of medicine that is very, very human and that requires social development and basic emotional intelligence, I guess you could say. So that again, I suppose, is another lesson that you learn early on. And some people struggle with that, particularly if they don't have any background in which they've been working with people. And that's something I always say to, to people who are considering studying medicine or physiotherapy, you know, the same, that if you're coming from a background where okay, your sciences aren't great, but maybe you were a waiter previously, you worked in a bar, you worked in retail, where you were constantly dealing with people, dealing with different, different types of people, troubleshooting issues with people, having to deal with conflict. You learn so many skills in those jobs that you mightn't think are relevant to medicine at all that will absolutely help you as you embark on your medical studies or any other healthcare domain. So don't write those experiences off. Um, they're very, very important. So yeah, that's something that, that I try to remind a lot of um, 
you know, hopeful students because a lot of people do get a little bit, you know, disappointed if their sciences aren't their strong point. They feel like they're a bit discouraged. They think, oh, everyone that goes into medicine is just this science uh, genius, the freak, the nerd. <laughs> and that's, that's just not the case, okay? Um, a good doctor is someone, of course, who has a good background in science, but what really makes a good doctor is the ability to communicate well with people and to deal with people well, to communicate the knowledge that's in that head appropriately to the patient so that they can go home with an understanding of their disease, understanding of next steps and feeling like the doctor actually cared about them, okay? Um, so that's something that is really important. Now, walking through the process of med medical school looks a little different for everyone in that so I'm a graduate entry medical student, meaning that, as I said, I did physiotherapy previously. So the course is, is shorter. It's a four year course. Most medical courses in Ireland are five years. A lot of uh, countries and some courses in Ireland, I think, are six years. So for us, our first year was where we covered all of the, you know, the basic sciences, your anatomy, your physiology, your pathology, etc. Most of that was out of the way in the first year. The second year, included some of those subjects, but with a bit more clinical application. Then third and fourth year for us are all clinical. So they're all placements. Um, that involves us rotating in different hospitals, GP practices, etc. cetera. Um, so that's something that is an incredibly valuable part of medical education, because that's really where you start to apply your knowledge or see how knowledge is applied. The unfortunate reality is that in, in uh, medical education when you're on placement, you're not really able to do that much because you're not very useful. <laughs> you're, you know, you just don't know enough, you don't have enough skills to be able to, you know, apply your knowledge in a really helpful way for patients. And that's something that really does differ from courses like uh, physiotherapy or nursing, for example. Because in, on physiotherapy placement, you're effectively at least by the third or fourth year, you're more or less working independently within the hospital, okay? So you'll, you'll have your own patients, you know, you'll be seeing them on your own, and yeah, you'll report back to your senior, but, you know, you're very much becoming more autonomous in your practice. And that's not the same in medicine, because as a, med as a medical student, you're often observing you know, the procedures, uh, surgical procedures, or maybe injections, or the insertion of a central line, or the, or the prescription of a medication, that are all really, really important, and if done incorrectly, could have dire consequences for the patient. So it's pretty obvious why in medicine, you mightn't have the same autonomy, because the intervention, let's say in physiotherapy, might be the prescription of exercise, whereas the intervention, let's say on my neurosurgery placement, is cutting into someone's brain. So naturally enough, you don't want medical students just uh, having their first shot um, at surgery by cutting into someone's brain. So there are some basic things you can do. You know, you might get to do sutures, um, stitches, cutting stitches. You might get to hold a retractor in surgery. Um, you know, you'll get to, you might get to uh, take bloods or you know, all these, all these d little procedures that you might get to do, assisting with anesthesia, those types of things. But you're very much not being treated like an autonomous doctor. And that is something that does differ quite a bit from some of the other healthcare professions in which you might be on placement. So that is something that is important to be aware of before you come in. So I suppose one of the most common questions I get is, is it difficult? Is it hard to study medicine? And yes, of course it is. It requires a lot of a person, of any person. There's no one that goes in and finds it easy. For me personally, I, I found it very challenging. Thankfully, my grades have always been pretty good and I have a standard for myself that I try to maintain. Um, and alongside medicine, I work online. So I've got my own business. Um, there's another, uh, Paddy Farrell is the other co-owner of the business. And uh, we have a number of staff and we run online coaching and education for uh, fitness professionals and trainees, of course. So. Throughout that, or throughout my medical education, I have been working um, full time, and that has had has come with many challenges. It has come with many challenges because, effectively, what I've been trying to do are two full time tasks, and that has made you know medical school more difficult for me than maybe it might be for some other people. Not in that my grades are poor; they're they're not. They're pretty good, or that I'm struggling in terms of the material or anything but just the overall stress in my life is, is very, very high. 
there are other people in my um, cohort, my class, who have a much better social life than me. You know, they often do things together, they'll go off for beach days or they'll go for food and they'll go out. You know, I don't go out that often. Um, I don't have much of a social life, to be honest with you. Um, and, and most of, of what I do is either work or study. So if I'm in the hospital all day on placement, then I'm working in the evening. I might get a bit of training in, but other than that, I'm not doing anything else other than work and study. And that's a step that I think you should take very carefully because it is a question I get very frequently is can I work alongside studying medicine? And you can, it is possible, I know people who do it, I've done it myself, but it is very difficult. It is going to be challenging at times, particularly coming up to exams. When you're coming up to exams, there's an infinite amount of material that you could be studying. And for me, I have that desire to study the material. And I know that the exams are going to be so incredibly difficult. So when I have that desire to study, but I, don't, I, I just don't have enough time because I'm working, it can be incredibly stressful. Thankfully, as I said, my grades have been good so far. I've been getting on well. So thankfully, I've been able to manage it. But some others mightn't be able to. And if I was in a position where I was failing exams, for example, I wouldn't be comfortable taking on everything that I do. And I think that's something that you have to be very honest with yourself about. Are you going to be able to work alongside your medical studies? And if in the first few months you're really struggling, your grades are really poor, you're just about getting by, you know, it's, it's probably not a great decision because at the end of the day, you're studying medicine for a very specific purpose. It's not just to pass exams. It's so that you come out the other end with knowledge that you can build upon to become a competent doctor to help people. And obviously it's not just enough to get by and to not have that knowledge solidified because then, you know, what are you gonna do when you get out into the real world? So that's something I would just add as a possibility. You, you can work, some people do, not everyone. And, and to be honest, it's a fairly small percentage. But you will, if you, if you do work, you will be trading off your social life and you may potentially be trading off your grades depending on your personal ability and, and what you struggle with. But let me say this, medicine is amazing. It's absolutely fascinating. It's, it's the most fascinating field of study from my perspective. And obviously when I say medicine, I mean all of it, you know, from the, the medical specialties, cardiology, respiratory medicine, gastroenterology, neurology, etc., to pediatrics, to GP, to pathology, hematology, the surgical specialties, neurosurgery, orthopedics, plastics, etc. The whole, the field as a whole, fascinating. There's something for everyone, you know. You don't, you're not, a, you're not very personable, you know, you don't like working with people, you don't like seeing people. You can work in pathology, you know, you're down there looking at slides, you're, you're, you're applying your knowledge in an in incredible depth and you're assisting in the diagnostic process and often playing a very, very important role in that diagnostic process. Very important job, very valuable job and one, you know, for someone who mightn't have the strongest communication skills. And that's not to say that all pathologists are like that, some of them just like it, but if that was you, you have that option, you know. If you like working with your hands and you like, you know, actually doing more manual procedures, you've got surgical options. You know, there, there's so many options depending on what you like. And almost everyone will find at least a few specialties that they're interested in. And it's that, that breadth and, and depth of study that makes it so fascinating because within each domain, there's just infinite amount of knowledge that you could learn. And that just makes it very compelling from my perspective that you're never going to know everything, but you can constantly be learning more and more and more and more. And what's so great is that the process of learning more can continue to translate to better patient care, um, makes you better at your job and, and helps other people to live better lives. And I think that's something that's incredibly compelling about medicine. And I just want to touch on one final note, and I can do further videos if people have questions, but one final note is that when you come out of studying medicine, you graduate, you're effectively fresh again. <laughs> so you're right back to the bottom of the ladder. It's like that first day in medical school again, because you're now an intern. You're out working, but you're very much still a trainee. And then in Ireland, at least, you become an SHO, a senior house officer. 
then you become a registrar and assuming you're on a training pathway you know within from graduating you're talking between 7 and 12 years for most people you'll become a consultant and it's at that point of 7 to 12 years plus your time in medical school plus any degree that you did previously that you become an independently practicing um, doctor so at that point you're a fully qualified board certified if you will neurosurgeon or neurologist or pediatrician etc and that's the point at which you begin to you know manage most of the patient's care yourself and you're training others you know you're passing the book on to your junior doctors now and you're assisting with the education of medical students all these sorts of things so it is a very long and a very challenging road but I think what's really really nice about medicine is that there is that opportunity where you go through that really grueling process yourself you become an independent practitioner and then there is that hierarchy that's maintained where you're not only supervising others but you now have the chance to be an educator as well so you're not just doing your job you also can be an educator and certain consultants will take that on to a greater degree and might do more lectures for example in the university or in multiple universities in some cases and some might just focus on their practice and I think that element of flexibility both in terms of what you do in your practice and you know whether or not you do more academic work and, and educational work I think that is something that is quite appealing at least for me that you have that bit of flexibility long term similarly you know you can work publicly or privately or, or do a combination of both that varies by country of course but I think having that long-term vision of understanding that there's a point that you get to where you have just all this autonomy in your work, I think that that can be quite compelling as well. Again, that level of autonomy varies. What hospital are you in? What specialty are you in? What country are you in? Etc. So don't get too carried away with that. But it is something that, at least for me, I find to be quite compelling. So that's most of my experiences with medicine as I said I'll follow up if people have questions I might discuss some of the you know specialties that I found most interesting what I'm considering long term um, what I struggle with most anything you want to ask about I'd be happy to follow up on because I get asked about this a lot on my Instagram I frequently do Q&A's um, and there's always medical questions or, or about the process of medical school if you have any follow-up questions just ask and uh, we'll see you in the next one